Now today's video is on how to water your lawn, so I thought what a perfect opportunity to use a water bottle to do some water bottle flips. Yo mate, what up? Welcome to another lawn tip video. Woo! Now today's video is on how to water your lawn. So a lot of people actually struggle with the right way to water your lawn. So let's get right into it. Now the general rule of thumb when watering your lawn is you want to get at least an inch to an inch and a half of water down into the ground per week. That's with cool season grass. Now if you've got warm season grass, it can take less because it is more drought tolerant. So you can give that half an inch to an inch just depending on the weather you've got. So normally if you've got a week that doesn't have any rain, you probably want to get an inch and a half on your cool season grass, whereas an inch when you've got your warm season grass. And if you're getting a bit of rain here and there, you can drop back to an inch with cool season grass or half an inch with your warm season grass. Now if you take anything from today's video, make sure you're watering your lawn two or three times a week instead of every single day. Because every single day will actually start to promote a shallow root system. Whereas you give it deep waterings, so it'll start to make that root system actually quite a lot deeper. So you're training your roots to shoot down further. So each time you water, try to give it half an inch of water each time that you do water your lawn. So if you've got warm season grass again, give it an inch, so two waterings a week, warm, cool season grass, sorry. Make sure you're watering it three times a week with half an inch. Unless you're getting rain, then you can sort of drop back your watering quite a bit. Now the theory behind not watering your lawn every day is basically that when you start to water deeply, your roots actually need to start searching for the water the days that they dry out. Now if you're watering your lawn every single day, Obviously the root zone is going to be wet all the time, so it's going to be, you know, not going to be searching for roots. Also, it's going to create disease if you are watering all the time, because your grass doesn't like to be watered all the time. It needs to be dry to actually build itself up to be nice and strong and resistant to diseases. Make sure you're giving it really deep watering, so half an inch each time when you do. So do that throughout the week. If you do it every three days, that works pretty well for me. I mean, if you're only doing an inch per week, so half an inch each time, maybe water on Monday, and then water again on the Friday. And if you're doing three times a week, do it Monday, Thursday, Sunday maybe, and just keep rotating through the weeks. You don't have to do it every single time on the same day. Just make sure the three days apart. Because you'll find if you start doing that, you're actually gonna promote those roots to go deeper, and they're gonna be so much stronger. Your lawn will actually become a lot lusher, more resistant to disease, better in the cool temperatures, and you're just gonna have a stronger and healthier lawn. Here's a handy little tip for you. If you don't know how much an inch of water is on your backyard, or how long it takes to do that, get yourself a tuna can because they hold about an inch of water. Get the tuna out. Oh, it's grilling. It's hot. Sorry, that's disgusting. Man, let's get my rain gauge and back up that theory. Can you tell me that I use my rain gauge often? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some creepy frolies in there. Yeah. <coughs> so remember, a tuna can holds about half an inch. This is an Australian term, so I'm not sure about the American ones. So let's go about 12 and a half mil. Right, done the can test. It's like a science experiment, but with water. Bang on. So that's right below the. I don't know if you can see that. That's exactly half an inch. So that is a perfect test to see how long it takes your sprinklers to get out half an inch. It's one of those little tuna cans. So Woolies tuna can, I think they're all the same pretty much in Australia anyway, holds half an inch. So if you're going to be doing your test, get a tuna can. <coughs> Still got that chilli in my throat. Get a tuna can and see how long it takes your sprinklers. So chuck it in the middle of the yard, I would recommend, and see how long it takes your sprinklers to fill up that tuna can. And that's how long you have to water for each time you water. Make sure when you're watering your lawn as well, make sure you do it in the morning, not at night time, because if you leave water on the leaves of your grass overnight, you actually start to promote diseases like dollar spot and brown patch and anthracnose and diseases like that that's really don't like the leaf being moist overnight. And humidity also comes in a factor with those sort of things as well. 
But you've got to make sure you water it in the morning. Now, if you can't do that, maybe try to do it when you get home from work. And just make sure that the grass dries out before it becomes dark, because it's going to stay wet overnight. I know sometimes it is hard to water it in the morning. If you've got an automatic system, it makes it easier. If you don't, you're going to have to try to do it at least late in the afternoon when your water isn't going to evaporate from the sun. So make sure you water in the morning if you can. So let's talk about sprinkler systems. So I've got an automatic sprinkler system. I've got one by Hunter and they've got MP rotors which are great because they sort of chuck out water quite slowly so it soaks into the ground nice and quickly instead of sort of sitting on top and creating pools and that. So I've got an automatic system. So I actually put this system in myself. It cost me about, including the trencher, probably about $1,500 which is pretty good. I think there's 27 sprinklers and four zones. So it's not too expensive if you do it yourself. Now, if you get a contractor in or something, it will cost you quite a bit more money, but I challenge you to give it a go yourself because it's not actually that hard. I mean, I had a bit of training from work, but there's plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to install those sprinkler systems, and I think any sort of bloke can do it if you give it a crack. So this is my little sprinkler box down here. So basically, here are my four valves here, which go to the different stations. So these two are for out the back, this one's for the side yard, and this one's for the front yard. So those valves are controlled by these solenoids here. Dum -dum -dum -dum. So when you turn them on, obviously the sprinklers will come on. Now they actually are automatic, so they've got little wires here that actually are fed back into my house, into my garage, which has the controller. So whenever I turn a station on, on that controller, it sends an electronic pulse to these little solenoids, which then opens the valve, which turns your sprinklers on. So pretty simple. Now if you don't want to go that option because you're in a rental property or something or you just don't want to go an automatic system, what you can do is get yourself one of those sprinklers from Bunnings or any shop we really, but I do recommend that you get an impact sprinkler. There's my son's whippersnipper. <laughs> so this is an impact sprinkler just here. Now this is what I would be using if I didn't have an in-ground sprinkler system. So basically you can really control where your water actually goes and the reason I like these is because they have a nice break up on them and they're going to chuck a lot more water out than those little ones you see that have those little streams that flick up and around the place. So they're awesome. Let me just show you how they work. So that's it there. This was about $60 from Bunnings. It's a Pope one. Good quality. It's got a nice solid bottom on it so it's not going to fling around when you've got some water pressure going through it. So the water comes out here and it's got a little grub screw. I don't know if you can see it. Focus. Focus camera. Focus. So you've got a little grub screw just here. So the more you have it in, the more break up you're going to have, so the more you're going to get the sprinkler having break up on little shorter droplets, but it's not going to shoot as far. So I recommend having it about midway, so you get that nice break up on the actual sprinkler. So you're shooting far, but you're also getting some water on the in-between points as well. If you have it out too far, it's going to shoot a nice stream with a nice arc, but it's only going to really shoot the water to that point further away. It's not going to shoot the water in between the, the start and the finish as well as you'd like. So about midway, so you get it shooting nice and far, getting that nice break up still, and it works well for you. Now there's a couple of other little features on this sucker. So I've got these two things here. So basically, if you open them up to whatever width you want, the actual sprinkler is only gonna shoot between those two points. So I'll show you. You flick this down, and your sprinkler can only go back and forth between those two points like so. So it doesn't do 360. Flick it back up. Now your sprinkler can do a 360. Yeah, blue. Now you've also got this little thing on top, which is just gonna affect the arc of your sprinkler, which means so how far it shoots and what sort of height it's gonna go at as well. So obviously you have it facing up. You still wouldn't get it shooting out nice and far. The further down you have it, the shorter it's gonna shoot. Now there's probably more settings on this but they're the basic ones. Get one, try it out, give it a go, it's worth the money. Good little sprinklers. If you don't have an automatic system, get an impact sprinkler. Love it. Now sometimes your sprinklers aren't going to hit every single area in your backyard. Even with the automatic ones, especially if you've got a bigger backyard, sometimes it's hard to get it set up so it hits every single section. So what I recommend doing is just hand water and getting your hose and spraying water in those sections. I know I do that sometimes, like in front of my shed. 
just over there. I normally hand water a little bit there because the sprinklers don't quite hit there as well as I'd like them to. Best thing to do is just hand water those patches with your hose. I mean, it's easy to do. At least you're not having to do the whole backyard by hand. Now, if you've got a smaller backyard, you could get away with just hand watering the whole thing or getting a smaller sprinkler. Those impact ones you can actually scale down so they do actually only shoot around that sort of sized area as well. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like my videos. Chuck a like down there if you enjoyed that and you have a good week. Ready? Whoa. Hey, yeah boy.